Mr. Kamich, six minutes to the chair. Thank you, Chair, uh, for that. So, Dobry uh, Panie Roszak, and I will not continue in Polish, so don't worry, you won't need to do live translation English to Polish. <laughs> Uh, that's totally our Polish and English. Um, I was going to ask, first of all, Mr. Roszak, uh, is the Canadian Polish Congress satisfied with the apologies issued so far, both by the Speaker's office and the Prime Minister's office? I, I think uh, it, it's important to focus on, on uh, whether or not the historical context here was understood properly, which is why I, I led with that in my opening remarks. Certainly, the Speaker ultimately resigned and apologized and, and recognized uh, uh, the Jewish and Polish communities in, in his resignation. So we, we appreciate that. Um, you know, certainly when it comes to, to uh, the, the other event, um, uh, you know, understand there, there was some discussion about a particular stakeholder involved in, in, in at previous committee meetings. Uh, I, I would hope that there would still be uh, an opportunity to, to, to get further clarity on, on that question. Okay. And for the Canadian Polish Congress, like, what do they think is the pass, path forward? Is there a fixed position on how Canada and the Parliament of Canada and the Prime Minister's office can fix the damage that's been done to the reputation? I think the only way uh, to do that, again, is to, to openly discuss the historical context uh, and to, to uh, frankly, engage with the communities involved, right? Engage with, with our community, with the Jewish community and uh, uh, the Ukrainian community uh, to, to chart a path forward from this. Of course, as I mentioned, it's a critical time. Uh, Ukraine is fighting for its survival. Uh, Canada's Polish community and Poland have been uh, some of the strongest allies of Ukraine in this fight, and we want to focus on that. But nevertheless, we cannot ignore um, ignore the importance of historical truth uh, as the foundation of moving forward in a situation like this. Like, would you then say through you, Madam Chair, that it's fair to say that uh, Canadians of Polish heritage in Canada and the Polish Canadian Congress uh, are very strong supporters of Ukraine, its fight against the Russian Federation and Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin. Um, is, is there a motion that Absolutely. the Congress perhaps has passed indicating that support? Yeah, I mean, we have we have participated as an organization in, in numerous efforts, fundraising efforts. Uh, I personally have attended uh, almost every single uh, rally in support of Ukraine and spoken on behalf of the Canadian Polish Congress in support of uh, the Ukrainian Canadian community, Ukraine and its people in, in this existential fight. So we we are we are strong supporters. We remain strong supporters and uh, we will continue to be. Um, uh, however, you know, moving forward, we'd like to work closely with with our Ukrainian Canadian friends to uh, to chart a path forward where where these types of historical uh, disagreements can be can be discussed. So then I was going to ask you all about reconciliation and how the communities can be reconciled after the damage that was done by the Prime Minister's office and by the Speaker personally uh, in Canada to the the views that all the communities hold with each other because you met, mentioned the Hutia Pinyatska massacre. Um, you mentioned the Polish Institute of National Memory and the research, the considerable research they've done. Now, President Duda of Poland and President Zielinski, uh, for three years before that incident, had worked on reconciliation, doing joint masses together, joint statements to try and reconcile the two people to events that happened during the war. So what can we do in Canada and how could the Canadian Polish Congress help to reconcile uh, that difficult past history? <laughs> Uh, certainly, and and I would I would love to work with uh, with uh, communities like the Ukrainian community, uh, and for for us to to join together uh, on, on this issue. But I think, from the perspective of of the the Parliament and Government of Canada, I think it is important to to, to allocate resources um, to navigate these very sensitive issues, um, and the, these aren't restricted to our communities, right? There are other communities around the world that have difficult pasts and and different perspectives on those pasts. Uh, uh, however, there needs to be a broader understanding amongst uh, amongst parliamentarians uh, and government officials on uh, on those questions. And I think that is where that is where a lot of effort should go into ensuring proper staffing, proper resources to be able to understand the nuances of these of these issues, particularly in a multicultural country like ours. So, in the case of the Parliament of Canada, what could we do on Parliament Hill to reconcile with? Um the series of events that led to Mr. Hunka being recognized, the lack of background checks, lack of security check that was done, and the grave error that was done by the Prime Minister's office and by the Speaker. Like, what could the Canadian Polish Congress add? Like, you said resources, so there's there things that we could do here. What could the Canadian Polish Congress help us with 
to achieve that goal of reconciliation and fixing this damaged reputation that Canada now has internationally. Of course, uh, one of the one of the things we can do is, is to serve as that resource. So where there is a question that involves the Polish community to reach out to us, we have uh, historians, we have documentation, uh, we have resources we can provide to assist parliamentarians in, in making those judgments. Um, so certainly we, we are here as a resource, as I'm sure are the other community organizations. Uh, other, I think, ways we can do that, there are, there are two uh, very active and great parliamentary friendship groups. Uh, on uh, on the Hill, the Canada Poland Parliamentary Friendship Group, Canada Ukraine. Perhaps there's something we can do jointly. Uh, I would suggest that that would be something worthwhile uh, of consideration moving forward. Uh, so when you, you mention academics and research, um, I think you're familiar with the work of Viktor Polishchuk, the uh, Vodis Brodni OUN UPA, which is evidence of crimes of the OUN UPA. It's actually a Toronto publication from 2000. Do you have other examples? of academics and researchers who have extensively written on this subject? Yeah, I mean, uh, all of the quotes I've, I've uh, shared with you today come from, uh, are, are sourced. So uh, I didn't uh, come with anything that wasn't backed up. So I'm happy to share uh, those resources with the committee and with parliamentarians uh, and certainly to direct them. I, you know, I'm not a historian myself. I, I like to think I have a good understanding of, of history, but I'm not. Uh, but we certainly have contacts that can assist in, in these questions, for sure. Thank you. We look forward to receiving those documents, and if you send them to the chair, we'll get them translated both official languages and shared around. So that brings Mr. Kamich, five minutes through the chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. So to go back, um, to continue the, the questioning I had at the beginning, I wanted to ask and put it to you directly, uh, Mr. Roshak, just that the King of Polish Congress's view, but the view of many Poles in Canada, and ask you to comment on this, um, one of the statements that was made by many people um, publicly who were defending Mr. Hunka were saying that, you know, there were many people who were given no choices during the war and people had very little opportunity to exercise, you know, full freedom of conscience and choose the sides they wanted to fight on. But I'd like to comment on the Polish community. We have something that Poles call Żołnierze Wyklęci, the cursed soldiers, people who fought against the Soviet Union who fought against the Nazis, so they had no home once Poland was fully occupied by the Soviet Union. And some of them continued to fight. And the last one was Josef Franczak, who was murdered in 1963. He was a man who continued to fight well after the home army was stood down and amnesty was declared. So there were men, in this case all men practically, uh, who continue, chose to continue to fight the good fight, had fought the Nazis, had fought the Soviets. So they made that difficult choice of conscience. How does the Polish community see that? How does the Polish community see those arguments when they're made in public? Yeah, I think I think it's important to, uh, at, at this point to even uh, take it out a little bit further uh, and to remind, as well as part of the historical context, that Poland, yes, Poland was was invaded by Nazi Germany, but on September 17th, it was invaded from the east by the Soviet Union. Uh, that's that's a fact that's often forgotten. And uh, once once uh, Poland was forced to uh, surrender, uh, the uh, a lot of Polish soldiers and, and other volunteers joined the one of the largest uh, World War II undergrounds, if not the largest, the Polish Home Army, which fought uh, Nazi German occupation, which helped save uh, Jews from the Holocaust, which, uh, which uh, you know, Jan Karski went was voluntarily went into um, uh, to Auschwitz to report back to the Allies about what was going on there. Uh, and then after the war, you know, you had the, even during the war, you still had the Warsaw Uprising, where uh, which was the the kind of last effort of, of freedom minded Poles to. Uh, to free uh, Warsaw uh, before the Soviet army had come in so that uh, some measure of Polish freedom could be maintained. Uh, and then after the war. So, so you know, Poland, uh, uh, Poland did not have, or Poles did not um, uh, have any large-scale collaboration with either the Nazi German or uh, Soviet regimes and, in fact, resisted uh, both uh, right up until uh, 1989, when Poland finally became free after so many years of uh, Soviet domination. Uh, I'm sure I'm glad uh, Mr. Roshak mentioned uh, Jan Karski, but it was another one too. Captain Witold Pilecki is credited as being also... Uh, Pilecki, of course. Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> who, uh, who was the one who volunteered to go to Auschwitz and spent several years there and saw 
uh, countless things that he then reported to Western allies that then gave their final reports that the Holocaust was in fact happening. Um, also, the one I think we saw Maximilian Kolbe, priest Maximilian Kolbe, give up his life for another man. I was going to ask you then, again, going back to the idea of reconciliation in Canada between the Polish Congress, the Ukrainian Congress, uh, fixing the damage that's been done between uh, the communities, because we're all on the same side. You've mentioned it before, the community in Canada, the Polish community in Canada, uh, are very strong supporters of Ukraine's fight for its freedom and to remain an independent, free, pluralistic democracy. Um, that's what the Ukraine Congress wants. That's, I think, where parliamentarians on all sides of the House want. So an act of reconciliation. Let me put it to you. You asked me if this is a good idea and would you participate in something like this, both in facilitating it, but having a presence there, um, is to do something like this, is to have uh, Rabbi Moshe Asman of Kiev or Rabbi Yaakov Bleich of Ukraine. And I mean, what could be better than one rabbi? You have two, so if you don't like the first one's opinion, you have the second one, ask them. They love this joke all the time, is to have both of them here, uh, to bring a mezuzah from Ukraine and to have both community leaders present, the Speaker of the House of Commons, uh, someone from the government of Canada, from all opposition parties, and participate in an act of reconciliation where we li literally hammer into the building, uh, pre preferably on the door of the Speaker's office, so this would be a constant reminder, a beautiful mezuzah, of what not to do, and that people need to do their homework before they make parliamentarians do a grave mistake that damages the reputation of this institution and all of our personal reputations as well. So would you participate in something like it? What do you think of this idea? Absolutely, I would. I think it's a great idea, and, and I'd, I'd love to work with parliamentarians on this on behalf of the Canadian Polish Congress as uh, Vice President for Canadian Affairs, and and certainly open to, to working with, with uh, uh, other organizations like the UCC, CJA, and others, um, and B'nai B'rith, and others to uh, to foster that uh, that uh, reconciliation and understanding. Uh, you know, I was born in Canada, I grew up here, and I, I value the relationships I have with with uh, members of the, the Jewish and Ukrainian communities. And I think there's definitely more we can do. So if there's leadership from, from uh, parliamentarians to, to, uh, and, and a willingness to uh, organize an initiative like this, we'd be, we'd be happy to participate.